Isn't it strange that the US gets so many tornadoes in the first place? I'm sure we have a map of that somewhere. Check out the map. 75% of all global tornadoes happen in the continental United States. And within that area, they happen in Tornado Alley. The US is not only special in terms of the total number of tornadoes. It also produces all of the most violent ones. Why? Why? That's a great question. So, so the central US is called Tornado Alley for a reason. It's like the perfect battleground for turbulent weather systems to create tornadoes. It's a perfect battleground because you have two major weather systems that are moving against each other. So you have the warm, humid Gulf of Mexico, which is constantly heating up and bringing warm, humid air northwards. And then you have the cold, dry, rocky mountain range, and that air is high above the mountains and it's descending down. So the atmosphere becomes unstable because the warm air is lighter and wants to rise, and the cold air is dense and wants to fall, and the battleground forms. When these two fronts meet, thunderstorms start to form because uh, the warm, humid air is condensing upon meeting the cold air. Like, the same reason that uh, a cold glass on a hot day will have condensation on the outside of it. Yeah, so a thunderstorm will form as well because these systems are rubbing against each other, creating friction, creating static electricity, basically. Okay. The U.S. isn't the only place to have thunderstorms that form on cold and hot fronts, but it's one of the only places on Earth to combine it with incredibly strong wind shear. Okay? What wind shear is, is when the wind speed and direction is changing at different altitudes, which causes the rising air to start spinning rapidly. You have like the wind going in different directions at different altitudes. So right. the weather system that's rising through this will start spinning in different directions. Wow. There's, there's a great clip as well uh, where you, you watch like the clouds go in one direction and then the ones above go in a different direction. It's really, it's really cool. Um, I think it's on Wikipedia. So wind shear is happening and we've now got this spinning horizontal mass of stormy air. So you have like thunderstorms and it's spinning horizontally and it's destabilized. Because the warm air is rising and causing updrafts within the storm, it's going up like this, it then pushes the spinning air column into a vertical position. Inside the storm, meanwhile, the spinning is getting tighter and faster, just like a figure skater pulling in their arms during a spin. And that forms a funnel cloud, which then, if it reaches the ground, becomes a full-fledged tornado. And that's it. That's how. That's that's the basic explanation for how a tornado forms. Okay, but like, why is the U.S. so special? Actually, Dr. Harold Brooks puts it better than I can. No place else in the world has the large, warm water on its equatorward side, with a wide, high range of mountains extending from north to south to the west of it. The jet stream is coming across the Rockies usually. Okay. It's coming from the west, so it's pushing the cold air down onto the battleground. Harold Brooks also says, all the other tornado-prone regions have at least one feature that is suboptimal. What he means is like, it, it, you know, they won't have a humid body of water, or they won't have a jet stream, or they won't have north to south mountains to the west, you know, yeah. so, something like that. Bangladesh does actually experience tornadoes sometimes because it has like abundant, warm, moist air, and the cool and dry air is also abundant nearby. It just doesn't get pushed down onto the hot air very often. You know, it's this giant plateau, mm. and there's no jet stream coming from the north directly south. You don't often have cold air moving down from the Himalayas because there's no, there's nothing to push it. So the wind shear in Bangladesh is low. The layers don't interact so often. You know, there's no battleground where they're constantly meeting, and there's no fronts and systems that are constantly moving through and, you know, clapping into each other, you know? The U.S. is not only special in terms of the total number of tornadoes, it also produces all of the most violent ones. So, okay, here, I'll illustrate that. In the last 100 years, the U.S. has endured 94% of all recorded F5 tornadoes, and an F5 tornado is basically the highest category of intensity that a tornado can be measured, and that means that it has wind speeds of over 318 miles an hour. 
The winds in an F5 tornado can be faster than the fastest wind speeds recorded on the Great Red Spot in Jupiter. Damn. Which, by the way, is the largest recorded storm in the entire solar system. In the last hundred years, total recorded F5 tornadoes. You've had one in Italy, one in France, one in Argentina, one in Canada, and 59 in the United States. Supposedly, there's been an increase in storms in the, in the last few years. The increase in storms has also been coupled with an increase in damages. Let's see, I think the current going rate is about eight and a half billion dollars in insured damages per year, let alone anything else that's not insured, which is a lot. It's not entirely clear that there is actually an increase in tornadoes, and why is that? There was this 2006 study, for example, that looked at tornadoes larger than F1s and did like a couple of regression analyses and a few things, and they found that the number of tornadoes larger than F1 hadn't actually increased from 1950 until now. Maybe in the past, if a small tornado, especially lower than F1, formed, it might hit some farm fields and the farmers might take notice, but ultimately it doesn't get reported because there's no one to see it, or it's nighttime, or, you know, there's just less technology back then, people are disconnected, people are not on the grid, they don't have telephones, it's the 1950s. Oh, and why are they missed? They were missed because the primary way that we detect tornadoes is through physically seeing them and, and reporting it. It might be the case that like grandma was out on the farm and she had no telephone access and she sees a smaller F1 tornado pop up in like a field in the distance. Uh, you know, maybe go a little bit of a distance and then disappear because the average tornado only lasts five to 10 minutes. Uh, and then she might just ignore it. So she might be in like the general store in town later and she'll say like, oh, Travis, I sure did see another dust devil out on Bowman's Ridge. <laughs> she sure was a beauty. And uh, it doesn't get reported, you know? But nowadays, nowadays, it's like suited up vanned individuals with combat jackets bursting onto the scene, uh, satellite phoning in the closest meteorologist to be like, we got a tornado stat 41 degrees south. Posting that sucker to YouTube pronto stat. So yeah, so nowadays it's like, you know, you get people hunting for the tornadoes. Like they're literally looking for them. And if someone sees a tornado, they'll call someone or they'll, you know, post it on some database or whatever and people will notice. In the past, they might've just missed them. A hurricane we know is coming because you see this massive, you know, with your global satellite systems, we see this massive storm that's heading towards the Gulf of Mexico, and you can look at it all the time and see how strong it is. Uh, meanwhile, with a tornado, you get these fronts hitting in Tornado Alley, and you'll see some thunderstorms sometimes, but that doesn't guarantee that there's gonna be a tornado within it. Because tornadoes are super complicated. Like, they have, you know, they need wind shear, and what if the air is not so dry coming from the Rockies, and you know, all sorts of things. So you can sort of see these storms, and they can say, oh, there's a risk of tornadoes, but you don't actually know if it's gonna be. Also, you get these massive tornado outbreak storms. So you'll have, like, a giant outbreak on one stormy day that will cause, like, dozens of tornadoes across multiple states. That's one of the most common ways tornadoes form. It's not like isolated individual ones. It's like a huge system of a lot of them, you know? We had a video about Indonesia and one of the most important things about that was that like in the comments, we had real people giving us stories, you know, primary stories from the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And it added so much context to the video that... Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're from like a tornado state, like did you... Do you feel like there are more tornadoes nowadays, or does it feel like the same, or maybe there are more small, like, sub-F1 tornadoes, but, like, not more F5s, you know? So we were talking about the increase in tornadoes, and we're not entirely sure about the data there, but there is something that we do know for sure. Tornado Alley, as we know it, has shifted eastwards into more populated areas that have less warning. Basically, tornado storms in these states are deadlier and more damaging than in the Plains states because they have a higher population densities and because the forested terrain means that people can't see them coming. Even to this day in 2020, a small tornado can touch down with no warning at all. We're not that good yet. Radar is important, but it doesn't detect tornadoes. Look, we would be blind without it. But the radar beam goes in a straight line and the earth curves. So the radar beam gets higher and higher and higher off the ground. So that beam might be three, four, five thousand feet off the ground. But we have no way of knowing what's down at the surface unless somebody's looking at it. Like, remember, the, the, the primary way to 
detect a tornado is through eyesight. So if you lived in a dense forested area of like Mississippi or Alabama, you literally can't see it coming. And maybe someone, maybe it's formed nearby and no one has seen it yet. It's not so much that Tornado Alley will no longer apply to a large swath of the central US, but that other regions are beginning to catch up to the tornado production rates that are more typical to the central plains. Just like tornadoes are not fully understood by the scientific community, the cause of the increase in tornadoes that we've been seeing is not conclusively understood by the meteorological, meteorological scientific community. So my first thought about the increase in tornadoes, I was like, oh, it's got to be climate change, like obviously. Yeah. Steven Strader is a professor of geography and environment at Villanova University. He says climate change is not the cause most of the time, but is a contributor and can make impacts worse or more frequent. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's not the cause. It just makes things worse and happen more often. We're not a political channel, but more tornadoes might be a bad thing. <laughs> Like a lot of meteorologists say, yeah, it's probably climate change related, but how and why and what part? It, it could be better understood. For instance, overall temperature and humidity in the region is increasing as global temperatures rise, uh, which increases the intensity of energy coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, which might lead to more deadly storms. And the reason for that, we think, is that dry air over California and the West, which is becoming reinforced thanks in large part to warming associated with climate change, that dry air is pushing the boundary between dry and moist a little farther eastwards. And as a result, places that would ordinarily have seen tornadoes in the past, like Oklahoma, like Texas, that's kind of being shifted a little bit more towards like the, the deep south and the southeast. That's it. <laughs> like, like comment. comment first, then like, then subscribe. Don't do it in any other order. <laughs> <laughs>